Right, so now we have Dr. Abhay uh, Pashilkar. He is the director of CSIR NAL, uh, Bangalore-based uh, CSIR lab. And, uh, you know, he's been doing a lot of quiet work in the last couple of years ever since he took over the mantle of, as a director. I just finished a, a very interesting, uh, uh, you know, talk at the Aerointe Seminar here on, uh, you know, India's civil aviation dream, making our own civil aviation, you know, like civil aircraft something which NL has been pursuing for a long time. So straight away, sir, I want to ask you, uh, many Aero Indias have come, many seminars. This has been one talk that goes around and then, you know, we don't hear much. So uh, you have been very passionate, especially NL, uh, all that. Uh, so what is happening uh, on that front and why is that we only see, uh, you know, some new, uh, some developments at some time and then everything goes to the back burner? to look at civil aviation ever since Dr. Satish Dhawan, our research council chairman uh, and uh, the former director, Professor Radham Narsima, took up this challenge. Uh, even in those days, it was quite clear that civil aviation was poised to grow. And today, that prediction has or prophecy has been borne out. We are growing more than 10% year on year, uh, probably even more post-COVID. And as you can see, recognizing that the Civil Aviation Ministry has uh, launched uh, this Udan scheme. This is the fifth edition of Udan. And so there is therefore a very strong uh, economic reason why uh, Civil Aviation is growing. And as uh, laboratory is working in this area, particularly in the civilian domain, uh, we consider it important that India should have its own uh, Civil Aviation industry as well. Uh, there has been since those so many years that uh, early 90s that NAL started its work where we made the Hansa 3, uh, there was a CNM 5 along with the Mahindras which was a five-seater aircraft, civil aircraft again. We launched the Saras Mark 1, uh, we had made our own light, uh, combat, uh, light civil uh, I mean LCRA, uh, so all of those aircraft gave us the confidence that not only the aircraft but also the technology behind the aircraft whether it is carbon composites uh, all of that can be pushed through the aircraft as a vehicle and we continue to do so in the Saras Mark II which is a 19 seater variant of the Saras Mark I which is currently in detailed design and in 2022 we were tasked by the Ministry of Civil Aviation to prepare a detailed project report for a 90 seater or 70 seater regional transport aircraft the RTA 90 as it is today called and we duly submitted that uh, detailed project report in September of 2023. So as you can see and as you rightly pointed out, uh, we have been motivated and we are very passionate about uh, India as a country acquiring or developing the capability not just in the manufacturing sector which is apparent today thanks to the investment that the country has made in military aviation uh, but also in the design aspect of it because as I was mentioning in my talk uh, by virtue of having control over the design uh, there are great many other advantages you can modify the aircraft to suit future requirements uh, you can take care of obsolescence when as and when it arises which is quite typical after a decade or so and many of our military aircraft also have seen obsolescence issues. Uh, more importantly, uh, it gives you uh, basically uh, the uh, ability to modify and suit it for not just the particular aircraft, let us say the RTA-90 or the Saras Mark II, but also for any future demands. So belonging to the Science and Technology Ministry and along with other institutions like-minded like DRDO, and to an extent HAL, we believe that build to print, which is make in India, uh, eventually has to become made in India. Uh, so in that sense, the indigenization of not just the airframe, which is now quite popular, quite uh, extensive work is being done in the country, not only for our own aircraft, but also for foreign OEMs, but uh, other systems like mechanical systems, the avionics electrical systems, 
and the power plant eventually which is again something which this country really desires and even in the military front we are still a few steps away from achieving uh, complete uh, autonomy or uh, complete atmanirbharta in uh, power plants so this thing this uh, capability will definitely enhance the country's ability like it has done and any country's prestige like it has done in the space front when we launched the and successfully demonstrated chandrayaan 3 for example the same will be achieved in the civil aviation front and we believe that uh, just like military aviation civil aviation also uh, unless we develop this capability within the country even by importing uh, aircraft uh, today our operators will face challenges they continue to face challenges when you look at the cost structure of an aircraft even if it is bought out uh, the biggest chunk for direct operating cost is the fuel uh, which is again pegged to the dollar the next important or the next biggest uh, aspect is the maintenance cost which is today uh, due to lack of mro facilities because the volumes of aircraft are low uh, the, those who are operating in the country and we of course that is now getting set right by the ministry of civil aviation but that aspect also controls the price which is effectively pegged to foreign currencies and the last as aspect is the leasing and finance because in india almost nobody buys aircraft they don't own it at least the passenger aircraft civil passenger aircraft so all these fronts this ministry of civil aviation is already attacking and i am sure in due course that will be addressed now, however so i want to just uh, so interrupt you and ask you Uh, what is that we need to immediately do 